show we've been encouraging people to think for themselves since 2016 yes we have Janie slash you look so good look at you hello hi i know you've been out a lot doing a lot of ghost hunting we'll get to that we will talk about it but we're going to bring on a special guest her name is ruby modine and so i think she's there hi ruby hi hi it ruby Nice to see you, too. Good to see you. <laughs> it's so great to talk to you. Hey, now, the way I kind of put this is I see Ruby Modine falling into herself. And by that, I just mean that you're, you've are you discovered the art, the artist in you, the singer in you, the actress in you, the activist in you, the, you know, and all of that. And, and, and I think all of us have got, you know, have got strengths inside and we just got to use them on a daily basis, especially now in America today. That's not a question. That's a welcome to the show. That was really long. That was a great welcome. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. So you have seen Ruby. She plays Sierra, the love interest of Lip on Shameless. And of course, Lori and Death, uh, Happy Death Day and Happy Death Day to you. And we'll talk about all that. We will. We will. But our purpose today to find out as much as we can under the table from <laughs> Ruby about Satanic Panic. This already is my freaking favorite movie because of the title. <laughs> so Janie Slash was asking me, do you play a Satanist at the house or, or, or you tell us, Ruby? I play the friend and foe of the pizza girl who is in the worst night of her life, which <laughs> I can honestly tell you, it is going to be the bloodiest, most gory, hysterical film. Well, we, we love blood and gore and humor all together. So it is, it's like a comedy horror film. It is indeed. And see, if oh, it, I love your bangs. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and you know, when you think about Shameless and in Shameless, everybody Everybody's life is fucking messed up so bad and but you know you find there's a lot of dark humor in that show Something Indeed there is I have, think it follows the the path of how life actually is you have to la laugh through the, the hard times and the struggles, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. All right, so <laughs> your your friend and then foe of the pizza delivery girl who desperately needs to make some more money and she has like one last pizza delivery. Do I have it right? Well, yes, because I know that your your end game is to get as much information out of me as possible. But no, 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 I'm not, well, I mean, to, I'm not yeah. going to give away any spoilers. Okay. <laughs> no problem. But yes, it follows Miss Kaylee Griffith as she goes through the worst night of her life and she encounters my character, Miss Judy Ross. And will I help her or will I not help her is the question. Okay, so Judy, you, maybe the whole movie hinges on your character. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> oh, okay. No, it's it's really it follows the um it follows the story of both characters and them just fighting through the night to get to make it to the next day. Good, cool. All right, so and we, I we encounter the darkest forces possible in the midst of all the craziness. Now I don't know if everyone knows this. It was filmed here in Dallas. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. No, we want everyone to know. This is a Dallas 
production. You had a very good dramatic pause there. Pretty sure everybody knows now. <laughs> yeah, I, I was waiting for more. And I look, was like, I don't look, know if I'm supposed to respond or if I'm waiting for Ruby to respond. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> look, and it's a, obviously this is a Fangoria film. Yes, it is. And we freaking love Fangoria. In fact, Janie Slash to her right has the new edition of the magazine, which we love subscribing to. Yes, indeed. Let's just do the little. <laughs> this is a great magazine. With like jazz fingers. Or yes. like... Okay, but look. Fingers. Okay, but look. This is a pizza delivery gone, gone, gone bad, and yes, she she has to make money. So so Haley Griffith has to make money, and she depends on her friend Judy to steer her the right way. But apparently, they make this delivery to a home there that is friendly to Satanists. And so then chaos ensues, and hopefully, like you said, a lot of blood and gore. Mm -hmm. Hey, can I just ask, gen generally speaking, what, she was saying I'm so sorry, go ahead, go ahead, Ruby. Oh, no, 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 go ahead. No, no, what were you saying? I want to hear what you say. Oh, what I was say? going to say that uh, she meets me along the way of that adventure, so they're actually new, new to each other's lives. Yeah, so you Good. don't really know what her intentions are. Is that what you're getting at? Exactly. Well said. She could be leading her into like a whole bunch more hell or helping her out. So it sounds like hmm. oh. that's what she I'm be, getting from it. Well, she could be going downhill or uphill. Gotcha. Catch my <laughs> mm -hmm. See, Janie, Janie Slash is able to pick up on all that innuendo where, the, you know, I only pick up on the obvious things. <laughs> she pretty much just like said it straight out. You just assumed that they were already a friend. Right. But she said friend or foe. I mean, it sounds like they meet along the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, can I ask generally? I like your style. I like her style. <laughs> she was under the table earlier, but it was to plug in her phone. My phone cord is not long enough. I usually monitor the chat room. I'm gonna if I'm if I'm underneath the table, I'm checking my cell phone in the chat room. <laughs> it's it's long, charging. It? It's it's like it's like this big, and I'm like, come on. Or it looks like I'm just staring into my lap. Ruby, you filmed it last year in Dallas, right? And did did you get a great big Texas welcome from all of our um, all of our good people here? We did. It was wild. I mean, it rained for the entire month, which I love because that's my favorite weather. But um, everyone was everyone was incredibly kind and very welcoming. And the houses that we filmed in were either incredibly elaborate or wildly spooky and you knew that like there was definitely paranormal activity going on inside of them gotcha okay so in other words maybe a little bit different setting than the houses you filmed in for shameless exactly gotcha okay <laughs> and now uh can we say some wonderful things about chelsea stardust all i hear is good stuff about her she is the best is it she yes her I, I've noticed that her hair is kind of like a, a mood stone. It changes with however she's feeling. Right now she's purple. Oh. During the filming, she was pink. <laughs> pink is a good color. I mean, purple's good too. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm fond of pink. I don't have purple hair. <laughs> yeah. Pink hair and blue hair. Pink hair. And I got hair. purple lipstick. I did a Prince tribute show today. <laughs> That's what's the, the purple in the mouth. Janie Slash is a burlesque performer, and she actually had a. She was performing today, did, and yesterday she was filming her show Ghost Babe. I did Babes. brunch today. <laughs> and where can I watch Ghost Bay? Ghost Bay. It's Ghost Babes. It's on YouTube. It's not on YouTube yet. We just started filming everything. It'll be on YouTube in September. But you can follow us on Instagram. I think it's at Ghost Babes Show but or Ghost you, Underscore oh. Babes. But will you tell her what you're what you're seeing? Ghost Babes. Gotcha. We are going to a bunch of haunted places and filming. Just us ghost investigating. So we had a lot of fun last night. We went to the Haunted Hill House and Mineral Wells and also visited the baker and went and looked for an alien grave in Aurora. Okay, well, I can promise you that I'll be watching that because my <laughs> boyfriend and I religiously watch Top 5 and we're trying to find other shows to watch that are ghost-related, so... You watch Top 5 on YouTube or... Like... Top 5 on YouTube. Yeah, I watched And then too. I just came across Top 5 S. Oh, I didn't know there was Top 5... Oh, wait. I think I watched that one too. I watch a lot of YouTube. I'm a big YouTube fan. Me too. And all the conspiracy theories, don't get me started. Oh yeah, I know. And I love watching the cult ones. I feel like you probably watched a bunch of those before filming Satanic Panic, I'm assuming. I did. Sure. And yesterday, actually, I watched one about vampires. Oh, that's good. I, I don't think I've seen that one. They're yeah. very cool. But I'm all about, I'm like anything like conspiracy theory or cults. I'm like, I want to watch that. 
I don't want to join one, but I want to like listen to about it. Curious. You want to learn about it. You want to get educated about it. Yeah, so I can avoid them in the future. See, maybe if that <laughs> satanic panic chick would have watched all these like YouTube videos about cults, she wouldn't have ended up in a satanic cult type <laughs> scenario. Oh, very true. Been like, this smells satanic cult all over it. I am leaving. She should have approached the house and knew, known something fishy was going on. Yeah, I, must, I haven't seen the movie, so maybe it looks normal. I don't know. Have you have you listened to all the ones about the pizza guys? Like the pizza people that go to these creepy houses? There's one. There's some of those like where some YouTube narrators talk about scary pizza delivery scenarios. Pizza guys? Is that what you heard? You cut in and out. Oh, there's there's some there's like some one um like one of my the horror YouTubers I listen to. He told like yeah. tells true stories and he had like a whole like episode on pizza deliveries gone wrong. Oh, okay. After this interview. <laughs> yeah, you should definitely I'll check it out. I can't remember which one it is, but I'm sure if you just Google pizza delivery has gone wrong. But yeah, like they end up in like people trying to kill them or inviting them in the house. It's like, why did you go in the house? Yeah. Like, why? No, I'm here to deliver pizza. I'm good. I'll stay right I'll here. Be like, yeah. I'll leave it on the doorstep. <laughs> it's fine. Love it. Scary stories by pizza delivery guys. Um, All right, Ruby. Yeah. So, Satanic Panic is a Fangoria film. It's uh, directed by Chelsea Stardust. Big high five, Chelsea. I hope you're watching. And, you know, we're excited about this movie. I, I, I hear a few things that it's coming out in 2019. I hope so. And, Ruby, is that logo behind my head, is that kind of the official or semi-official um, uh, uh, branding for the film? I can say that I don't have the, like, a a specific answer for that but i know that that's what's going around everywhere and i love it because it's so aloof and you don't know what's happening it's so i'm gonna go with that yes for right now it's simple but menacing yes. and the photos that are coming out i don't know if you guys have seen them but i've seen them floating around instagram mm -hmm. I gotta, I gotta i'm look gonna deeper. look this up this yeah. you were supposed to i know i that, thought i dug failed. deep I d look here's what i did you find. did not dig deep enough i I found that Ruby said once that you wanted to play a vampire in a movie. Oh my gosh. So badly for my entire life, I am hunting down that role. Well, we have a lot of Dallas-based directors, and maybe they're aware of this now, and you, I don't know, maybe you'll I, get I think you'd be a great vampire. I love hmm. vampires my entire yeah. life I have. I think that I've been a vampire every year for Halloween. Now, what kind of like, seven. what style vampire do you want to be? You want to be more like the like Kate Beckinsale, Celine Kick-Ass vampire? Or do you want to be like the sexy like leader of the vampires, like the vampire girlfriends or what are they called in Dracula? Do you remember the three girls in that film? The what? Do you remember the three women in that film? Yeah. Now, now I'm gonna get in trouble because I can't remember their names. But the three actresses that are oh the, that are Dracula's wives. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I mean. Yes, one of Dracula's wives. Yes. I would love to play that one once and then a kick-ass one like Kate Beckinsale and then we can go back to interview with a vampire and then we can go backwards all the way to the first Dracula film. I, let's do them all. Yeah, there you go. I like it. <laughs> Did you watch What We Do in the Shadows? No. Why didn't you watch that? There's like no vampire. There's very there's like no vampire women in it really, but it's hilarious because it's made in New Zealand. It's about three vampires like a documentary following them. It's a mockumentary and like how it, what it's like to be a vampire in modern day. What we, mm -hmm, what we do in the shadows. What we do in the shadows, and there's a TV show now too on FX. You should check you it out. It's hilarious. Highly so recommend it. I mean, there's, it's not sexy. There's no sex, but it, they joke about it and stuff like that. And then there's the guy it kind of. Be sex. It's it's great. No, it's hilarious because the jokes they make. I, I just it's one of my. It's the movie I watch when I'm drunk too. Like when I'm drunk, that's. I'm always like, can we watch what we do in the shadows? And Satan's like, it's three o'clock, and I'm like, I don't care. Put it in. <laughs> okay, that's another one on my list. Check. Yes, got it. <laughs> hey, um, so Ruby, when when you get angry on Shameless, oh. when you get angry on Shameless, and like you're pissed off at Lip, and then you're pissed off at the baby daddy, um, mm -hmm. and your voice, that I don't know that that show, it's you, it's 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 that show. It, I got scared. You my raised, voice scared you, you. Yes, you raised your voice, and I got scared. She has the nicest I did. voice. She has a powerful, uh, she has a stage voice. She's a good actress. That's what that is. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jenny. I'm pretty sure that I just heard my boyfriend burst out laughing in the other room. Well, and no, no, no. Well, oh, so you get on his case sometimes? No. <laughs> I can hear I him. Interview. We can hear him. <laughs> All right, dude, we hear you, man. But what about my voice scared you? 
you. I'm sorry. Is this a question or is this a statement? I think uh, he's just telling you. I don't think it's a question. But I have another statement. Ben in the it. chat room says that he loves you and happy death day. Ben in the oh. chat room says he loves you and happy death day. And happy death day to you. Happy death day. To you. I'm sorry. I'm trying to... Oh, my God. I'm trying to get my computer to charge my phone so that I don't get disconnected from you guys. Okay. And we're good. I'm so sorry. I should have been on top of that. That's all but right. Yes. It's okay. I'm charging my phone right now, too. So, we're good. But, okay. <laughs> and, and speaking of your voice, this... It, it, a lot of people mm. don't know this. You're, you're a singer. And Ruby Modine and the Disease has got at least one EP out, and these are some kick-ass songs. I told you earlier, I play them on D Bellum Radio. Uh, High Horse Running is currently my favorite. I so appreciate that. I um I've been working on music a really long time. On um, if you go to Cinco de Dos Películas on YouTube, you can see a whole bunch of other stuff that I've done, but. This EP is my most recent song, uh, excuse me, my most recent piece of musical art. And it's just, oh, it means so much to me. And I worked with really, really close friends on it. Mm. And I just, I love hearing stuff like that. So thank you. I'm glad that you enjoy it and that you're playing it. You're very welcome. I'm Yes, I'm going to reach out to you every time. Well, you know, it'll be regularly that I, that is a Thursday night show. And I'll let you know or give you a heads up when we're playing it. But I, I try and let artists know that we've got them on their playlist. So, I appreciate that. That show is called Beyond Punk, and so it's a variety of genres and such. So, hey, okay, um, cool. I'll check you, it out. Are there any other projects you're working on right now, movie-wise, that we should be looking out for a TV show? I uh, at the end of last year I had a couple films that I was working on, but as of right now, I'm just jumping back into the swing of things because I had throat surgery so now i'm officially back at i'm back at it let's say that are you good yeah. me yes You're yes i'm great good <laughs> she's back at it she's she, in the swing of things that's, uh, that's positive good Definitely oh yeah gone. it was um it was because as i've been and this is how i describe it it's a champagne problem i had a very good 2018 i worked quite a bit including working on my ep and my throat was overworked and now it's a hundred percent and it's very exciting because I get to go back into the recording studio next month to start recording new music. That's awesome. Are, are these songs you've written already? Uh, no. Okay. They're so, written down, but the actual music will come once we're in the studio. Understood. That's totally cool. That's cool. Well, would you keep us alerted? And man, I'd certainly like to help get the word out too on your any new EP. Absolutely. I will definitely keep you alert. Do you do you enjoy making music more or acting, or is it just both, or just your absolute passion? They're my absolute passion, and they're it's they're two completely different animals. They're different loves and different things that like need work on them in completely different ways. Do you do you find the process of music kind of um, cathartic after maybe doing a movie? Because it probably is pretty intense with the hours you work on set and how often you're you know acting is acting is crazy. And it's, it's a great thing, but long hours and people, cameras are all over you and you have to keep repeating things and doing things. So, I just, But there's something really fun to that. There's something therapeutic mm -hmm. to that. And then there's also something therapeutic while being in the music studio. You know, when, um, when I was doing my EP, that was me digging into my soul and grabbing things that I hadn't quite listened to before and deciding that I was going to put them on paper and release them. So that was a really great release. And when I'm on set, I get to scream at people and terrify. Yeah, people, ter ter <laughs> terrify people like me. That sounds fun. <laughs> Did you have to scream? Did you have to practice your scream before filming uh, Satanic Panic? I'm assuming you probably screamed. That's just an assumption. I did because you have to you have to scream from your diaphragm, otherwise you you hurt your vocal cords. Yeah, it's got to come from way down in here. Yeah, there's there's a lady that trains like me like teaches metal singers how to sing from the appropriate places. Yes. I believe that. Is that is, okay, so you didn't have to take any classes like that. You just kind of. So it's good just... to work with somebody so that you know exactly what you're doing. But this time it was on set working with Chelsea Stardust, who was awesome. Because I would tell her that I was really afraid to do something in a scene. So we would go behind the trailer and she'd be like, okay, let's go for it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Hail to Chelsea Stardust. It is. We, we are so glad, Chelsea, yeah. you made that movie in Dallas. That's great that she was super supportive like that. If you're like, I'm not comfortable. And she's like, well, let's get you to that level. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, honestly, 
working with her was such, there was such a safety blanket with her because she'll stop production. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're, if you're uncomfortable about something or you're, or you're not feeling a hundred percent, she'll, she'll say, everybody wait one moment. I'm going to go talk to, mm -hmm. you know, my actor and see how she's feeling about it. So to quote Wayne's world, we are not worthy of Chelsea Stardust. <laughs> <laughs> And this is a Fangoria imprint, uh, and so Fangoria is based here in Dallas. It's, yeah. I'm, I'm just super thrilled. When I first heard about this movie, I'm like, holy crap, this is right up my alley. Satanic panic. I made a sign already. Can you see it? <laughs> no, really. We uh, There it is. The, yeah. Where is it? Oh, it's on a big whiteboard, isn't it? Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm making it satanic. You know, that wasn't good. Like, <laughs> see, that... That's, I'm going to carry that to the screening and everything. Satanic panic. This is not a sporting event. Right. You're not supposed to be like, Aah. I'm going to carry it around everywhere. Satanic panic. I believe it. He will. <laughs> it's, I'm uh, so excited. I hope to see you outside of Overlook Film Festival just holding that sign really high up. Are yeah. they showing it at Overlook Film Festival? They are indeed. They just announced it on Friday. Well, see, see I was news. talking to Jessica last time she was in the studio, Jessica from Pangor Pangoria, and she was like, you should go to the Overlook Film Festival. And I was like, when is it? And she's, it's the last It's the last weekend of May, right? Do you know when it's screening? <clears throat> like what it's the all online, time is? So okay. It's not a spoiler alert, but um, mm -hmm. I believe it's May 30th, but you'll have to go on Overlook and Film the, Festival and all the dirty details. And it's in New Orleans, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hey, All right, you know, so, New Orleans is only eight hours away. <laughs> so, the um, film festival of, of terrifying movies in one of the spookiest cities in the world. Isn't that excellent? So, Ruby, we can assume from this that it's done and in the can, right? That's an assumption that you feel that you can make. I feel I can. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I can. All right, so look. So... Remember, I was talking about you and Shameless, and you got that voice and all that. It's um, it's it's such you were. It was such a scene of a girl with spine. You know, you have to stand up to some doofuses, and uh, <laughs> you you. I was trying to be nice and just try and get you're in their face. And uh, I, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe it, maybe I had the TV turned up way up too, but I think it frightened all of our animals in the house. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Hey, speaking of animals, yes. we know you love animals. I do love animals. And we know you love this planet. There is no planet B. <laughs> I'm sorry to be cheesy, but I love that. I love that thing. There is no planet B. There yeah. isn't. And so our partner, Liquid Death, says death to plastic because we know it is choking life in our oceans and, as you said, on land. And this, mm -hmm. is, this is water, refreshing water marketed to metalheads like me in recyclable aluminum. Hell yes. Hell yes. Recyclable aluminum. We don't have any time for single-use plastic bottles. And so I ask I you, Ruby and Ruby's boyfriend, please <laughs> consider ordering some Liquid Death. You can do it on Amazon. Aaron Gallagher, go on Amazon.com, please, and order this can. Liquid death. On it. Liquid death. And if you go to their website. Liquid death. On it. Yeah. It's li it's actually <laughs> liquid death mountain water. And let me just tell you, Ruby. So when you're at a you're at a gig, you're going to a metal show or you're going to a hip hop show, you don't want to drink beer all night. You you pace it with some water. And so it's marketed to metal heads and actually it was created by co created by Will Carsola, who uh, who created Mr. Pickles on Adult Swim. No. Yeah. Isn't that badass? That's super badass. So let me guess, you're a Mr. Pickles fan. I'm like I'm I'm very wary to answer this question because I is Mr. Pickles the same as Pickle Ricks? No. <laughs> right, I didn't think so. That's alright, that's alright. That's totally fine. Hey. But I yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I put my foot way in my mouth. <laughs> Hey, you did, now this is like three or four years ago. You've been doing music for a long time. Look, you did a, a music video with some corpse paint in some of the scenes, I think. Oh, yes. That was uh, actually, that's one of my favorite songs that I ever uh, wrote. It was the first quote unquote honest song that I wrote and decided that I'm going to do. And the wonderful, incredibly talented Matt, Matt Mahurin 
designed the bodysuit that I wore for that and did my face paint. Very nice. <laughs> yes, and in fact, that's what inspired our show. Well, no. may maybe not, but it's <laughs> nice to see that there are other corpse paint wearing people around. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Ruby, do you mind if we show, if we take a, a, a pause right now and show a video of yours, which is 1905, which I think kicks ass? Absolutely, please do. Now you should be able to see this, but we're we're gonna we're gonna play it now and we'll come right back to you. So so yeah, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. You got it, boss. 1905. So, correction, that was uh, Trigger Finger. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was laughing about. Yeah. But that is <laughs> but, another one of my favorite songs, and my dad directed that music video. No kidding. All right. Yeah, we, we shot that in our garage. You did? <laughs> yeah. And uh, Miles Heiser and I were working on a film called Memoria, and I asked him while we were on set, hey, would you, uh, would you like to come and rock out and be in my music video? And he said, yes. Thank you, Miles. Thank you, Miles. That's awesome. That is a great song. Thank you. That is a great song. Another song discovered. Ruby Modine and the Disease. Was that and the Disease, that one? 
Mm-hmm. Ruby Modine and the Disease. That is the band name. How did you come up with your band name? It's pretty unique and clever and catchy. Okay, well, here we go. Uh, we all were recording in our sound studio and everything was going swimmingly and then we needed to take a food break, lunch break, as we all often do. And we went downstairs to get air and sat on the dumpsters in front of our music studio. And my um, like business partner figure, Zachary Murdoch, started laughing and said, oh my gosh, you know, Ruby Modine and the dumpster and the dumpster children and the dumpster. And we just kind of went back and forth until we said Ruby Modine and the disease. So it really came from a Venice Beach dumpster conversation. <laughs> it's a good lunch conversation. I like it. Yeah, yeah. I, like it. I, I bet if I saw a picture of that dumpster, it would make it's me a think very of cool inspiring yes. dumpster. You sit on a dumpster and then you're kind of relaxed, right? <laughs> Your mind. Sure. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You well, you like, go yeah, hang out on dumpsters. Relaxing. Well, yeah. yeah. I don't I don't think there's Ruby anything Mo about dumpsters that's comfortable. And the, and the disease and your dad directed it, and it was in your garage and that that is just a powerful song. I mean, you look you look kind of gothic in it. Uh, I like. Yeah, the, I was a couple years back. Yeah. Did you have? Are you <laughs> saying you were you kind of had a goth phase or? No, that one just, it was uh, Ruby Modine Disease has begun with my EP. That one was just Ruby Modine. Okay. <laughs> hey, um, just a quick thank you and shout out to your assistant who helped us get you arranged. Is it, I'm thinking, is it Bianca? Um, Deandra Unessi, my De absolute Deandra, wonderful I'm sorry. manager. Yeah, I'm sorry. Deandra, thank you very much for helping us get a hold of, of, uh, of Ruby. Appreciate you, Ruby. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for having me on your show. You're very, very welcome. And so we're excited about Satanic Panic. So it looks like it is maybe right around the corner since it's going to festivals. Thank you, Chelsea Stardust, for making this film. Thank you, Fangoria, for backing this film. And thank you, Ruby, for being either a, a good or not so good character in this movie. And we look forward to seeing it. <laughs> you guys have a beautiful day. We appreciate you. You. you too. Thank you so much. Bye, Bye, Bye Ruby. Ruby. <laughs> So fun. Yeah, Fangoria. That's it. You know, we'll see Fangoria at Texas Frightmare Weekend, but we'll talk about that more later. You know, wouldn't it be cool if one year we had Ruby at Texas Frightmare Weekend? That would be rad. Uh, yeah, because, you know, she's got all, all these scary she's got movies. got a lot of scary movies going, going on. And, and who knows? Satanic Panic might just, you know, just take the horror community. I'm excited about it. I'm considering going to the Overlook Film Festival just to check it out. So remember, Satanic Panic will be screening at the Overlook Film Festival that is in New Orleans. There is a website you can go find. I think it's like www.bookfestival.com. Only about a month Check away, it right? It is like exactly a month away. It's the last weekend of May, and we are on the last weekend of April. Yeah. All right, there New you Orleans. Go. Overlook. And you should go to New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans anyway, because it's a freaking amazing city. It's so much fun. Think about ghost babes in New Orleans. Yeah, that we're we're planning on it. Good. Oh, eventually, okay. Good. yeah, we're yes. working towards it. Excellent. Right now, yeah. we're hitting up Texas. If you want to, you know, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Explore. Not sponsor. Oh. Uh, like, yeah. uh, just give us money. Support. Produce. Yes. Uh, but, yeah. We need a producer. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, um, all right. So speaking of that, here's a few things coming up. If you want to fund it. We're, we're going to get to Sin Kieran uh, here very shortly. Now he's a guitarist with Ministry. Badass. We want to talk metal. And Sin, we're glad you're gonna you're gonna pop on our show here in just a few minutes. But between now and then, let's talk about a few things. Texas Frightmare Weekend is freaking coming up, and it is almost here. Janie Slash, you were gonna tell us a little about the parties and kind of uh, special special things going on there. And it's now a good time. What are we talking about? Called? Texas Frightmare Weekend. Frightmare Weekend. Well, okay, you sprung that one on me. Okay, this weekend coming up is Texas Frightmare Weekend. Uh, it's May third through fifth. Uh, sad news: I heard out that I heard that all Saturday passes—that's just Saturday only passes—have sold out. Weekend passes are still available. Friday only and Sunday only are still available. So get your tickets now but, online. But you can buy one for all three days. Yes. Yeah. I believe so. Yes. There's just a handful of those left. Online ticketing does end on Wednesday. That is your last opportunity to buy them online. If not, you'll be waiting in the ridiculously long ass line oh. to pay, pay by, uh, you know, cash credit. 
you know, whatever. But it takes a while. Uh, they have amazing guests. Also, they still have some photo ops available. I think most of the big ones have sold out, but you can still check out that out online. And they have the schedule up for the photo ops. There is a vendor map on the website you can check out. There's some incredible vendors. Uh, let's highlight my favorite, which is, of course, Corpse Factory which is our sponsor. You can check them out. They have, I think he said like, he has a ton of bins of stuff. He's going to have amazing clothes, accessories, bags, all the things. Usually has a big Action booth. figures, things you can get autographed by the stars they have there. He has a giant booth. Also, uh, Zombie Gear will be there. And, uh, you know, if you're into wet specimens and dead things, the Curiositeer will be there. She's always one I hit up. She's amazing. And uh, so definitely should check it out. Outstanding uh, vendors. Most importantly, Friday is the party it is additional fee uh, my friend bradley is is uh organizing it yeah, and bradley. they will have it's an evil dead theme so you should dress up they have a dj it's freaking amazing it's party i think there's a cash bar i don't know if they take credit i'll have to find out on that one okay. but uh yeah you definitely now that's party. friday night friday night is the party saturday is karaoke so uh i'll be at both so come find me if you are there and let's party and have a good time let's have some drinks yeah, yeah. they always have full theme drinks so that starts like. this friday may 3rd and yep. uh, then May 4th, and then Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. Party and, at Texas Friday. And weekend. if you are a vendor or a guest or an independent director or in a band or something, and you we'll be there doing interviews and you'd like to be interviewed by us, uh, just shoot us a message. Good and point. we will try to so, fit you into the schedule so, if yeah, possible. Texas, um, Texas Friday Mayor weekend. We will be there. We will be there all weekend. The Corpse Paint Show will be there. So look for us. Please say hi. And yes, we'll be doing I interviews. I will be there open to close. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yes, you will. You'll be very. He visible. will be there most of it, but I will, I'm usually the one that's there all weekend. But he'll be around, you know, hanging out like 11 feet tall. 12. That's 12. Yeah, you go 12. All guys lie about that. Now, uh, all right. So that's Texas Frightmare Weekend. Now they have some special screenings. Yes, you know more and, about the screenings than I do. Yeah, I only know all the details. So we've talked about it on previous shows. I'm very thrilled about uh, Ghost in the Graveyard. I'm gonna Donald's. watch Velocipaster. Velocipaster. Velocipaster looks really exciting. What is this? I'll take your debt. I'm all about the dolls. <laughs> I love dolls. Uh, my fellow ghost babe hates dolls. They scare her. Yeah. The house that we were at last night, there were dolls everywhere. There were dolls hanging from the ceiling. So uh, so one half, at least one half of ghost babes, maybe both of the ghost babes will be at Texas Friday night weekend. Uh, it's probably just going to be half. It's probably just going to be me. All right, uh, all right. I think... Uh, I think uh, my counterpart is going to be... She might come by like one day. Okay. I'm not sure. Yeah. We were talking about yeah. this weekend. I don't know. Well, people can at least say hi to you. Yes, yeah, And then look for both of you. Also, on... Little Spark Films will be there too. Of course. Yes. Joe, who we had on past episodes talking about the torturer, and Catalina, of course, who has you know popped in here as a co-host and a guest. Shout out to times. Little Spark Films, yes. who does all of our graphic art and they'll be for working this with show. Us, we so appreciate you. Make sure and to say hi. They'll, they'll be walking around with cameras, talking to VIPs and regular folk too. Right? Yeah, and also I passed the guest co-host Fatty Rage. She'll be around too, so you can go find her too. She's gonna help guest out, co-host a few of our past episodes. Yeah, cool. Yeah, she'll be there too. So we'll be all partying, and uh, yeah, so come find us. Yes. Hey, the other thing going on is everything exciting at Gas Monkey. <laughs> that that uh, there are a lot of great metal shows coming up is what I'm trying to say at Gas Monkey Live and Gas Monkey Bar and Grill. So the Gas Monkey website has a list of all of the shows that are forthcoming in the next few weeks and all through oh. the through fall. Yeah. Go ahead, Janie. I forgot about the screenings. Shame, shame, shame. Uh, Thursday night screening, Rock and Roll High School at the Texas Theater. Uh, Satan will be posing as someone else that night, the DJing. And then yeah. they have after behind the screen will be uh, the remote sedated. Man, sedated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and PJ Souls will be in attendance. That's Thursday night, Texas mm -hmm. uh, Texas Theater. And then there's Alamo Drafthouse screenings. I know there were a few tickets left last time I checked, but there may not be any more for the reanimator screening. And I think Barbara Crampton and Jeffrey Combs will be there. And then also the Nightmare on Elm Street, I think, has been long sold out. No. Oh. Okay. Uh, un unfortunately, Jeffrey Combs uh, will not be able to make oh, no. uh, the event this year. Yeah. Did he really cancel? Uh, I, I believe that there was a scheduling conflict with uh, him and his wife won't be able to make it. Okay, so. never mind. I, I that that one really disappointed me too. That's disappointing. I'm but you still see Barbara Crampton at that reanimator. Who right? is a national treasure? <laughs> Barbara Crampton <laughs> is amazing. Yes. Okay. Oh, that it, sucks. I mean, not that it's awesome. She'll still be there, but Jeffrey Combs is amazing. I met him once, like I think Frightmare number two or something. I can't remember. 
Ziggy, did I send you information on 69 Eyes or the Gas Monkey Live link? Um, we present some of the shows coming up at Gas Monkey. Yeah, like Chaos and Carnage, which is a Corpse Paint show presents with Whitechapel, Dying Fetus, Revocation, Fallujah, and all those others. That's on Friday, May 10th, so that's right around the corner as well. Uh, only a few, de a few days off. Uh, the 69 Eyes is May 6th, and look, it's with MXMS, um, The Nocturnal Affair, and also Scary Cherry and the Bang Bangs. Hey, I'll be there too. That is on the day after Frightmare ends. It's Monday, May 6th. So you got to say- catch me as I fall off the stage from sheer exhaustion, I'm sure. And let and me put just, me back up there. <laughs> <laughs> look, and let me just say right now, Janie Slash, that we are able to- uh, grant a few comp tickets to dedicated people. And there it is right there. The 69 eyes Monday, May 6th yes. uh, to uh, if you make a donation of any size to our webpage, which is corpsepaint.net, and then find the sponsorships tab and uh, donate button. And the other premium that we'll put add in that is a uh, CD from kill everything. Yes, Death Metal Band, definitely. Texas they're Band. amazing. So, um, yeah. Over on the far right, it says uh, sponsor corpse paint. And then on one that One more. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sponsor and then on that paint. page, if you scroll down, there's mm -hmm. a donate button. And you can donate uh, any any amount. Any amount on that donate button. It's a PayPal account. Yes. Please so, help us out. Help us keep going. Uh, one more thing about Texas Farmer Weekend, then I'm done. And then you won't hear about it. And you'll see recaps later. Uh, Stop the Stigma booth. Stop by. They have an amazing booth. They're having silent auctions. They've got some incredible things on auction. You can see them on the Frightmare Facebook page. So definitely stop by and bid on those and help out at great cost. That's, that's, that's it. Absolutely that's fantastic. All I got. No, no, no. Stop that's Stigma. All I got. You're, 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 stop the sig stigma. stigma. You're right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Very, very good. There's so many great things and cool guests this year at Texas Frightmare Weekend. So, you know, we want to see everybody there. Please say hi to us. But also, you know, take your vitamins and pace yourself and drink a lot yes, of water. Yes, con crud is real. I got it last year. It was awful. Well, what do you mean? Was it kind of like, what did you get last oh, year? Oh, I got, I just, it's, the con crud's just kind of a thing. It's like your throat hurts. You feel weird. You feel kind of flu-like, but you're not really sick. It's just a thing from, You kind of overdid it. You're, and being around other people and all the germs and everything. There's and great people. At no, Texas no, Army. it's fine. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not insult They're disease-ridden. They're monsters. Anybody else, you know what I'm talking about. He's just making me sound like a bad person. And that's con crud it's with Germany. a K, right? C O N C R U D. Con crud. It's a real thing. I got it last year. I know a lot of other people that did. Okay. Hey. Thing. Yeah, it's a mix of exhaustion and dehydration. Yes, exactly. Right, there you go. Thank you very much. And being around other people, so stay hydrated. Yeah, drink some take liquid. Your, death. Take like some airborne or emergency, and you know, have a good time. You can order this right now on on uh, Amazon I, and get what? it delivered in two days and have it for the phone. You say you, you you're giving me shit about Concrete, but they sent me home from work the next day. They were like, "You look and sound like shit. Go home." Yeah, you're they right. did. Okay. Well, well yeah. to be fair, you looked and sounded like shit. I did. That's why they sent me home. That voice is from our operations manager slash producer, Mister Ziggy Becker. Thank Hello, you, Ziggy, everybody. for running the board and taking care of us and connecting with all of our badass guests. Thank you again to Ruby Modine. We're going to bring on Sin Kieran. We're going to bring on Sin. And then after we talk to Sin, Ziggy's when we're going to cover those other um, the, those other things about um, Curse of Valberga. I'm going to throw my holy water at but, you. <laughs> but I want to talk to Sin first. Sin is guitarist, badass guitarist from Ministry, of course, and and many other bands. We'll find out the scoop. Their new album is called Americant, and uh, they just finished a mini tour, but they're all, it seems like always doing these these one month long tours. So, hello, hey there, hey Sin, man, it's good to see you again, and thank you for making time to be with us today. Thank you, my pleasure. Very good, man, and uh, we see your badass guitar right behind you. There's the ministry logo. Yeah, here, let me give you a quick little tour here. Oh, nice. Okay. Right. Some of my then, kiss stuff. I'm oh, actually okay. working on music <laughs> as we speak. Look at you, man. All right. Yeah. So, awesome. so you, Multitasking. Look at you. Like, all right. So they just, so kiss just had this final farewell tour. Did you go? Did you see him somewhere? Uh, I, you know, I've seen them so 
many times. Um, I haven't yet on this one. All right, okay. But hey. uh, I got to see the original four back in 78, so. Whoa! Yeah, I'm uh, old school. Now, that was when, uh, you know, they, they, yeah, well, at that point, they had the platform heels, and they were jumping up in the air a lot more, weren't they? Yeah, they were a lot younger back then, so they all still had their original hips. Um, <laughs> so they were able to uh, <laughs> jump a little bit easier. <laughs> And so let me guess who opened the show. Is like Blue Oyster called or something, right? No, you know, um, that's a good question. And I actually just looked it up recently. It was some band that never really went anywhere that opened the show when I saw them. I first saw them um, during the filming of Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park, um, this horrible movie that they did yeah. uh, back in 78. Yeah. And then I saw them the following year in 79 on the Dynasty Tour. Um, but I just recently looked up the opener because I couldn't remember who it was. And when I looked at it, I was like, man, these guys went nowhere. Oh, okay. All right. You, yeah. you, don't, you don't have to tell us a name. It, it, it doesn't matter. But, and I remember for a while there, weren't they opening up for other major bands? Like, I, I don't know, Aerosmith or, or I, I don't know. Who. Oh yeah. I mean, and they, they actually used to open up for uh Blue Oyster Cult when they first started. And within about a year or so, they were Blue Oyster Cult was opening for them. Like they got big, yeah. uh, fairly quickly. And right now, when you listen to Cold Gin or you know some of the original stuff, does it? I, I don't know. Do you, are you still, or, or are you like, I like that song, <laughs> or <laughs> I don't know. Do you have a different opinion of it now? No, I still, I still love it, man. Um, I can listen to Kiss every day and, uh, you know, I watch their videos every day. I mean, I, I'm a huge fan of Kiss from the 70s, from like 73, 74 till about 79 or so. That's my favorite era uh, yeah. of Kiss, but I still love all those songs, man. I, I saw Ace recently um, and he's playing better than ever. And yeah, I, I still love all those those early songs. Yeah, because Ace is, uh, so, you mean at a solo gig or solo tour he was doing? Yeah. Yeah, he did. He just did a, uh, he came through L.A., I don't know, three or four months ago or something like that. And I, I saw him. He sounded amazing. As a guitarist, are you focused on his fingers and just kind of like, oh, how's he doing that? Or um, Yeah, I mean, not so much now, but as you know, when I was growing up and uh, learning how to play the guitar, his vibrato and his feel um, was a huge inspiration for me. And it's actually, I, I still, I incorporate it a lot with my playing now. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I took a lot from him. So yeah, his, his uh, left hand technique and his right hand picking technique as well was something that uh, I did sort of, um, you know, try to emulate as much as possible. Very cool. You just finished a tour with Ministry, and before that, just finished a tour with Lords of Acid. Yes. And are there Two more? Tours right in a row. Yeah, yeah. One ended, you picked up, and the next one, like I don't know, it seemed like the next day. So, um, <laughs> are there more? Are there more? Um, are there more girls in the crowd at Lord of Acid, Lords of Acid show compared to Ministry? Um, I think so. Um, it, you know, it's a uh, it's a different it's definitely a different type of crowd, a different uh, demographic. You know, Lords of Acid fans, um, uh, you know, are part of the whole. Uh, you'll get you'll get a big part of the fetish scene. You know, the the whole bondage thing, all that stuff, and uh, and Ministry is a little bit different. You know, um, it's not quite as colorful as Lords of Acid, but uh, you know, they're both uh, equally as enjoyable. Yes, you bet, man. Look. I'm not going to ask you about all of the tour bus action from Lords of Acid, uh, but maybe next time you're in you Dallas. Were, you, were, you, were, you were on the bus. I was. Yeah. Uh, but and, you got out, uh, and you got out fairly, you know, relatively unscathed. <laughs> right. There's, <laughs> there's no injuries to my lower half. And uh, <laughs> sin. But next time we're, you're in Dallas, uh, let me buy you a drink, and then I want to hear the real stories, man. Yeah, definitely. You can buy me a pineapple juice or something, and uh, all right, all right. we'll go over the uh, uh, tour bus stories. I'm kind, I'm kind of a hey, I'm kind of a coffee guy now. But look, I'm holding up. This is one of our partners. They're called Liquid Death. Now, oh well. 
maybe you've heard of it. It's mountain water. It's water. It's high pH, healthy water, and mm. it's created, it's co-created by Will Carsola, who who invented, who, who created uh, Mr. Pickles on Adult Swim. Oh, wow. And, Did not know that. Yeah, and so their, their motto is death to plastic. They market it to metalheads. They say, hey, you know, take a take a break from drinking beer all night and, te- you know, and temper it with uh, an occasional can of liquid death refreshing mountain water so that you're not cool. so hung over the next morning. But, yeah, it's water marketed to metalheads. And oh, wow. On Interesting. Their, I'll, have to, I'll have to try it. Please. And on their, on their website, for a while, you could sell your soul if you'd sign this contract, actually sell your soul, and they would send you a free can. <laughs> I'm a bit late for that, but uh, <laughs> the, that, that contract was signed many years ago. <laughs> <laughs> many years ago. And then yeah. and then you started playing those blazing solos. What did you sell it for? Yeah. I'm always curious. What's that? What is What What did you sell your soul for? Uh, you don't want to know. Okay, never um, mind. <laughs> if, I, if I say, we'll, we'll, we'll all get arrested. Okay, don't tell me. I sold mine for a candy bar in high school. I don't know if it was worth it. Oh, really? Yeah, it was damn nice. good. It was a whatchamacallit. You know, they're kind of hard to find. Oh, sometimes. I remember those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Vending yeah. machines, like a dollar. Yeah, I'm a, hungry. I'm a, I'm a bit of a chocolate connoisseur. So, yeah, I know all that cheap chocolate stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah but- you know, it's funny. I, I get people bring me chocolate almost, uh, almost daily um, on tour. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I'm kind of old school in that I'm not very picky when it comes to chocolate. I, my favorite is milk chocolate, but uh, you know I, I'll take a Reese's and a Hershey's any day over any fancy type of chocolate. So that was gonna be my, um, that was gonna be my and next I've had show. chocolate all over the world, you know, oh, in really? Belgium mm-hmm. and France and everywhere. But uh, my favorite is still like Reese's or Hershey's. Uh, Reese's are like the shit. But do you prefer like you know the like Reese's pumpkins or like the Reese's pieces or the Reese's cups? I always like the Reese's pumpkins at Halloween. Well, I like those as well. But uh, I like the I mean just the old school Reese's cups and then um, you know um, they do those eggs. Yeah, as well. the Easter egg, like the for Easter. The yeah, Reese's like eggs. I like I like those too. And the Valentine's Day oh, you get the giant they heart. Be. <laughs> Now, yeah, but doesn't the UK, doesn't England have great chocolate too? They do, they do. There's uh, out there. I mean, I really like the Ritter Sport out there, um, and but I mean, it's milk chocolate is what I mainly dig. So yeah, and they love ministry in London and in all of UK, the UK, right? They do, and we're actually we'll be back there. <clears throat> excuse me, uh, mid June. Uh, the next tour starts June. 13th or 15th something like that but um yeah. the next thing is uh the uk and europe mid-june to mid-july that's uh that's the next thing some festi- the festivals yeah we're doing festivals and uh club dates as well nice um i, I know we're doing grass pop um yeah. we're doing uh not fest yeah uh with Slipknot and all that stuff so there's always a handful of festivals and then in between the festival dates um we do club dates, you know, theater dates and stuff like that. And uh, I think some of the shows we're doing with Dying Fetus. Oh. And then the other half of the shows we're doing with Three Teeth. So it's going to be a, a good run. You know, you mentioned both of them. And both of those bands we admire and are going to be playing at Gas Monkey Live here in Dallas. Uh, cool. Yeah, coming awesome. up. So, yeah, yeah, both great bands. Yes, Chaos and Carnage, uh, Dying Fetus is, is uh, I think, it's May 10th. Um, and then uh, Three Teeth is later in the summer, June or July. I'm not sure the date, but it's on the Gas Monkey website. Cool. Yeah, I've known the Three Teeth guys uh, a long time when they were just called One Tooth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, look. When wow, they they've grown started. a lot what? to three? three? Three teeth. Well, I think the story is, Sin, you correct me, okay? I think the story is that he has a human skull in his in his house and there's three teeth in it and is it do i have it right uh that i'm not sure um okay. i haven't been to, to lex's place but uh <laughs> it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me and, and actually you're not supposed to have a human skull in your house we need to get rid of ours too, yeah i know so. again yeah. it wouldn't surprise you me. can you can have one if you have like i don't remember there's something we don't have one uh right we don't hey sin <laughs> um so yes. look, 
Look, does Al say, look, time to record a live album. Let's go to the rowdiest crowd. So, and then he chooses like, I don't know, Amsterdam or London or, or Berlin or, or wherever. And, uh, you know, is it, is it sort of like, let's, let's plan this. We, we'll have a great sounding crowd for our live album. Um, the last live record we did, um, I think it was something like that. I mean, we kind of, uh, try to figure out, you know, where we think we're going to have a really good live crowd. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, you're, you're partly right with that, but, uh, I mean, I don't remember specifically, um, I think it was, we record the last one cause we did a couple of live ones. We did one. Uh, back in 08, during the 08 tour. And um, that's what, uh, that record eventually got me my second Grammy nomination, uh, was that live album. And then the last one we did, uh, Last Tangle in Paris, I think that's where it was. Nice. Well, congratulations. Yeah, I, I, I didn't realize on, on the Grammy. That's outstanding. Yeah, man. I've, uh, it's, it's, it's weird. I, I've been nominated twice with Ministry. And Ministry has been nominated six times, um, but we haven't won yet. So maybe next year. Yeah, yeah, maybe next year. Ministry, I know you cut a song with KMFDM. Uh, you tour with Lords of Acid, and uh, there's other bands too. It's got it's got to be a fun uh, life, man. So Revolting Cox, Society One. Yeah. Uh, and then I have my own metal project called Three Headed Snake. Uh, which is actually what I'm working on right now as we speak, because um, we're going to be doing a small uh, tour of the UK in August. Three-headed snake is so right after. Yeah. So right after the ministry tour, mm -hmm. um, I'll be home for a, a few weeks, and then we go back to the UK with Three-headed Snake, uh, which actually features Caesar Soto from Ministry, Derek Abrams from Ministry, mm -hmm. uh, and then our bass player Dirt. From Society One, and then our singer Johnny Ray, um, who's kind of the new guy in the band. Um, we go back to the UK and, and do that. Uh, we're, do, we're playing Bloodstock Open Air, nice. and then um, yeah. a handful of uh, UK dates, which will be our debut, by the way. Wow! All right, you heard it here. Three Headed Snake, right? Yes. Three Headed Snake, and he's working on the material right now. We got a sneak peek at your iTunes, your your Apple computer. There, it looked like uh, a moment ago, and Man, that's cool. Oh, yeah. Put that's that three headed that's three headed snake stuff happening right there. That's it. See? Yeah. You gotta watch the Corpse Pay show to stay up to date. Exactly. On what Sin Kieran is doing. Here's what I like. I like your website, sinkieran.com. Very easy. And yep. then I noticed that you we call it Hell Paso. You did a, a DJ set. In uh, in El Paso, uh, I, I think recently, recently, um, it was in 2019, and yeah, there we go. We're showing it right now. Great stuff right there. So when you DJ, sin, yes. are, are you playing? Are you playing Three Teeth? Are you playing? You know, playing Banjo Admire, or is it, or is it kind of your own? I don't know, your own, your own mix of stuff, or it, it's a little of both. It really depends um, where I get booked. And um, usually I end up getting booked at, um, you know, like goth industrial clubs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I try to uh, play stuff that I think people will dig. You know, obviously I have to like what I'm playing as well. But uh, I try to cater to, to what the, the crowd likes and I try to get a feel for what they're digging while I'm DJing as well. Um, I like to keep an eye on on you know, the dance floor and see what people are digging. Mm -hmm. um, I don't use headphones when I, when I DJ, I, I, I really like to have, I like to have a monitor. I like to keep it very live. I don't have anything um, like pre, uh, pre programmed or yeah. anything like that. I just right. do it on the fly. Right. Right. And, song uh, to song. Yeah. You know, I just, I, I like to, to keep it very real. Um, but yeah, it depends. You know, I usually, like I said, I get booked at those types of venues and clubs and stuff like that. And I'm actually going to um, going to be in Athens, Greece, in a few weeks, um, doing a private uh, DJ show out there. Holy crap! Yeah, that sounds fun. Like uh, when you say private, is it is it for a, like a private event? Or yeah, it's a private event. Um, it's someone's uh, someone re actually reached out to me yeah. and asked if I would be interested in DJing uh, at this 
particular private event. And uh, I had a meeting with them last week and working out all the details and stuff. But it's it's all a go. And I'll be out there the weekend of May 18th. That weekend is when I'll be out in Athens. So a lot of travel. Yeah. Yeah. And then June back in the UK and such. Now, uh, the person who reached out to you, I'm just uh, fishing here. Was it a member of Rotting Christ? It was not. Okay. Um, right. It was not a member of Rotting Christ, but I'm, you know, who knows? They might reach out to me. Yeah, after this DJ gig, if it goes well in Athens, maybe you'd be booked there yeah. more. <laughs> hey, Absolutely. so like, re regardless of where you DJ, uh, Sin, yeah. regardless of where you DJ, it, can you always like throw in an old 80s, I don't know, I don't know, Depeche Mode or whatever, you know, and, and people are happy? Absolutely. I've, yeah. uh, I have done that. Um, and I usually try to throw in one or two real old school, you know, 80s throwback kind of tracks and stuff. And people respond to it, you know. Um, mm -hmm. uh, when, I, when I DJ in Minneapolis um, at a place called Ground Zero, the last song that I play there always, every time I DJ there, is usually some old Prince song. And, yeah, um, yeah. you know, uh, it always goes over amazingly well there, obviously, in Minneapolis. But uh, I try to throw in some stuff like that, you know, wherever I'm at. Nice. This lovely lady to my right uh, just performed to a Prince number. She is a burlesque dancer. We did a oh, Prince, wow. We did Prince tribute show today. It was called Princess for a Day. But, yeah, we did a, they, Oh, they wow, did that's a, awesome. Yeah, it was cool. They did brunch. It was fun. Very cool. And so, in, uh, this was in Dallas? Yeah, it was in Denton, actually, at Andy's Bar in Denton on the square. Okay. Mm -hmm, it was fun. Cool. So, Very cool. That's why I have purple lipstick on today. We, there was so much purple. Yeah. It was amazing. I don't, know if you can see <laughs> my, I don't know if you can see mine or not. So, so, yeah, she's doing the Prince thing. She's got purple lipstick. I also have purple zebra print pants on. Oh, we want to see those. Cool. Me too. <laughs> Yeah, can you stand awesome. on the table? I bet you look better in them than I in them than I do. I don't think so. Don't twist, sir. So, um, <laughs> Sin, I think of you as having a Texas connection, um, and that is because, well, first off, I you know I, I saw that that flyer for the El Paso DJ set, but but also isn't isn't Al Dallas based? No, he um, he used to live in in uh, El Paso, and okay. he was there for many many years, and and. Mm -hmm. uh, Actually, when, when I first came into the project, I came into the whole Al Jorgensen camp in 2006. Mm -hmm. And I came in as the guitar player for the Revolting Cox. Um, and at the time, Al was already living in El Paso. So he used to fly me out there uh, for rehearsals and stuff like that. But uh, that's kind of like the, the Texas connection for me is because I used to go out there so much to rehearse and to record you know, whenever we're writing and recording albums, I'd be in El Paso. So I spent, you know, many, many months out there. Um, so El Paso is almost like a second home to me. I have a ton of friends out there. And uh, it's really the only other place that I've uh, sort of lived uh, outside of Los Angeles. No kidding. Well, I am a El Paso boy. I graduated from UTEP. Oh, wow. uh, yeah, from UTEP. Oh wow! Um, yeah, and um, yeah, uh, I mean, all my all my family is out there, and uh, some of them live in southern New Mexico. Uh, but yeah, yeah, but I, I was raised and went to high school and college in El Paso. Oh, what a trip! Yeah, um, Al used to live over in the Sunland Park area. Yep, and um, you know, so we, I spent a lot of time over on the west side, man. And um, yeah. I know my way around uh, El Paso fairly See, well. I think I saw you 10 years ago at some record stores, I think. Uh, probably. Yeah. I mean, we'd always loiter all you know, all <laughs> over El Paso. There is a really good record store in El Paso. But, yes, there is. Yeah. There's some good record and more stores. Importantly, and more importantly, there's L&J's in El Paso. Uh, okay, Re educate me, please. What is that? Some of the best Mexican food around. Oh, gotcha, okay. I think yeah. When metal bands are on tour, we notice they come they come to Dallas, maybe Houston, and then they want to hit El Paso. And I think there's a there's a lot of great metalheads in El Paso. And sometimes they you know they they they're coming from Mexico or wherever. But uh, you know just met, metal is definitely supported in El Paso. Yeah. No. There's there's definitely a great scene there. I wish 
Um, I wish there were more venues in El Paso um, because a lot of venues kind of, you know, pop up and then close down. And, yeah. and that's what I've seen in the past 13 years. Um, and that's oftentimes why bands skip over El Paso and end up oh. going to Albuquerque um, is because they're not, there aren't a lot of venues there. It's either, a, you know, you're either playing the Coliseum or trying to find some clubs somewhere. So there's nothing in between for those in-between bands. So I, I hope that, um, you know, another venue pops up. And uh, I know Tricky Falls just closed in El Paso, and that was that was a good venue there. But um, yeah, you know, I, I dig the scene there, and I know there's a lot of people that, that love metal and that want to see bands. So hopefully it can, it can come back, you know? You bet. And um, it's sort of like a mid-sized venue, sort of like maybe Gas Monkey is here. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, you need a mid 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 size. And yeah. I think this is gonna sound funny. I think maybe the last big metal show I saw there though was um Crocus. Remember them? <laughs> nice. Of course. I love Crocus. Yes. When did, when did where did you see them? <laughs> it, it was in El Paso and uh, uh it was it must have been like very late eighties or something like that, man. So Awesome. Yeah. Crocus. Yeah. I, and I think that they're re-energized now and then put something out last year, you know, so they're kind of kind of back on the road. Yeah, I think so. A lot of those uh, those bands are, are kind of coming back. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of those uh, sort of um, classic uh, metal kind of festivals that are popping up. So there's a bit of a resurgence for that, which is cool. It is cool. It kind of, you know, don't call it hair metal, but it, it's just kind of, you know, fun, fun rock, you know. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah. I, I dig that stuff. You know, I, I listened to a variety of things, and that was uh, definitely something that I listened to as a teenager, you know. Um, so I'm still a big fan of all that stuff. Yeah, kind of straight up rock. You know, like like, yeah. like Lemmy said, we play rock and roll. Exactly. You know, if, I agree. Yeah. Why, why label it all? Yeah. So, hey, uh, Sin, man, I appreciate you making time to, to, to talk to us now, but you know, I, I want to give you the floor. Um, obviously, we know about Three Headed Snake coming around the corner, um, and and Ministry's new album Americant is out, and yep. um, and you know, and then you you're back. You're going to Athens in May, and then you're going to um, UK and, and and other cities in Europe in June, um, and that sounds so real fun. But what else is what else is at the forefront of your mind right now that maybe we didn't cover that that you you want music fans to know about? Um, I mean, the biggest thing for me, you know, is uh, first and foremost, I just want to thank everyone that, uh, you know, um, still follows me and um, still supports me. I, I, I can't thank uh, people enough. You know, I'm in awe um, that people are still, you know, uh, supporting what I do. And uh, I get tons of positive feedback from people from all over the world. And, and you know, my... my uh, my heart goes out to everyone and I'm extremely thankful for that. So, because as cliche as it may sound, you know, without all of these people, you know, I wouldn't be able to do what I love to do. So they've, they've given me um, a career, you know, that, that I've always yeah. wanted as a kid. So uh, first off, thanks to all those people. And um, I mean, the main thing is for me, you know, I'm always writing, I'm always, uh, creating and looking for the next thing and, and uh, right now I'm focusing on this three-headed snake project um, and obviously we've got that ministry tour coming up uh, mid-June to mid-July and then right after that is that three-headed snake tour uh, in the UK um, and uh, I'm thinking that uh, there's going to be some other ministry stuff coming up towards the end of the year mm -hmm. I know that we have they just announced um, a festival in Tennessee in October that we're going to be a part of. I think we're playing with, uh, I think I saw like, like Guns N' Roses and the Deftones or somebody else. It's like a three-day festival, but it's out in, in Tennessee in October. I believe October 13th, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, good. Um, yeah, and then, um, yeah, I think there, there's, there's talk of, of some other possible ministry stuff shortly after that, so... You know, just uh, keep your eyes open um, okay. for that stuff. And uh, I'm very grateful and thankful to still be able to do this, you know, uh, at my age, at my old age. Oh, come on, man. You're a young man. 
Look, I, I, what I hear you saying, Sin, is that um, you appreciate that the audience uplifts you by giving you the positive feedback. Absolutely. Okay. And and what we serve, or try to serve to do, Sin, is be an amplification of that, this show, because we do want to uplift you and all of your, your bandmates and Three-Headed Snake and, 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 and just let people know we want them to support underground music and above ground music and uh yes. and, and sin kieran today especially sin kieran well i appreciate that and thanks to uh you know you guys and uh shows um like this um it keeps that platform open for all of us you know and that's a much needed thing um it's a very important piece of the puzzle um so you know thank you guys for uh for being there and for the support for having me on and for having you know all the other artists that you have on as well because uh it's definitely a team here and uh i think we all need each other and help each other out agreed hey next time you have a layover in dallas uh please uh, you know don't forget my email address and uh, i'll meet you at the airport man and i'll buy you that pineapple uh, uh whatever you wanted so <laughs> <laughs> Pineapple uh, juice and a Reese's. Yeah, definitely, man. Um, I'd, I'd love to come down and check out your studio, man. So next time I'm in Dallas, I, I will definitely hit you up. Thank you, man. We have a great little home here. And and then also, one last thing. Don't forget, consider uh, checking out some Liquid Death. You can actually... Oh, work. I will. Yeah. I will, man. It's yeah. it's water for metalheads. Cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I Sin, will definitely check it out, man. Sin Kieran, the Sin Kieran from Ministry. Man, appreciate you so much. Much love, Sin, and uh, hope hopefully to see you or talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Uh, again, I appreciate uh, both of you guys. Uh, thank you guys for having me on, and uh, we will see you uh, next time I'm in uh, Dallas. Heck yeah. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Sin. Thank Bye you. Yeah. Bye. You got it. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Great to talk to him. Yeah, he was awesome. Ministry. Okay. Before we get going, I have to I have to make a correction. Jeffrey Combs will be at Frightmare. It was Stuart Gordon and his wife that can't. Stuart Gordon. Oh, canceled. okay, my bad. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was saying I didn't see that. Yeah, Stuart Gordon canceled. Jeffrey Combs will be there. Very good. Very cool. Thank you, Bradley, for that information. The Corpse Paint Show will be at Texas Frightmare Weekend, walking around. So please say hi to us. Of course, we're talking about the big festival, the annual festival in Dallas. It's at uh, DFW Hyatt Regency, or Hyatt Regency DFW, if I have that right, um, May 3rd through 5th. So that's this coming weekend. Make sure to validate your parking before you, right before you leave. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, it's a tip. People forget, and then you know how many no, people, right. they you're forget, right. and they that get in the line to money. leave, and they're like, fuck. And then you got to pay, and you don't want to pay at the airport. It's a fortune. So get your, you can get, if you're an attendee. Go get your parking validated. It's a little dusk right next to the exit and the and, entrance. The same thing. And guess what, Metalheads? They will validate it. You know who's going to be there at Frightmare? Scott Ian. Scott Ian, yes. Mr. Scott Ian. Anthrax. So you can get in line and uh, get your picture taken with him and say hello to him. Um, and so many other cool guests at Texas Frightmare Weekend this coming weekend. And also, Bradley, if you're watching, we are going to look for you. I know you're in charge of panels, and we look forward to connecting with you and such. Mm -hmm. Hey, hi. One movie that we've been following here, besides yes. Satanic Panic, yes. okay, is The Curse of Valberga. Yes. The Curse of Valberga. They mm -hmm. put out a little teaser. It's sort of a trailer, but it's very brief and very short. And this is the movie that starts Nicholas Kvarforth from the Swedish band Shining. This is extreme death metal. Well, they they made an extreme horror movie. Uh, called um, Curse of Valberga. Now, remember, we had the director on a couple of months back. Yes, I remember. Yeah, you can indeed. go into our YouTube and find that episode. That's right. If you're like, what the fuck is Curse of Valberga? And right, we'll find so, out there. So I think if now is the time, we're going to ask Ziggy to put on that short little uh, teaser for Curse, Curse of Valberga.
yet. Now, see that. Oh, I'm sorry. That looks really heavy to carry. I can't imagine. I would be like, you know, that guy looks so cool holding that big thing. And I'd be like, hold on, let me adjust. Yeah. I can't. And then I'd probably drop it and accidentally kill myself. So could you ask in the chat room, what the heck is that called? Like a, some sort of saw, which is sort of like a chainsaw, it's but it like has a, a saw. circle no, saw. No, it's like a end. circle saw or something like that. It's like a big one. It's, it's like someone took a bandsaw and put it on the end of a weed whacker. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much essentially <laughs> it. It's just a really big one. looks like it's huge. So, so the dude carrying this big saw, obviously we, we are assuming he has a lot of muscle so he can carry this thing. And he then is stick a it strong in man. I yeah. don't think I could hold. It may not be that heavy, actually. What? He just looks intense. He probably cuts off people's limbs and things like that. I'm just don't, guessing. Don't give it I'm away. Guess. Quit guessing. You Quit. guess. And you don't ask questions. You, you say statements. And then you stare at them like you're expecting them to answer. It's weird. <laughs> I know. I know. They're like, is that a question? The freaking host can't even ask a question. He just makes statements. No. Yeah, we've only been doing this for... How many years? Yeah, two and a half, uh, no, three. No, 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 no. We started three. at the end of 2016. Okay, so... Okay, so it's coming up on three. Oh, God. No, uh, two and a half. Yeah, two, two and a half. half. Alright, two and a half. You can't math either. Oh, my gosh. Can All we have an, uh, Can we have an anniversary episode? Because, you know, I notice other people do that. They have anniversary episodes, so... We'll ask all of our guests to come back. I wasn't here in the beginning. So. Yeah, you weren't. No, I was not here in the beginning. You had other guest co you had guest co-hosts. I got the spot. I don't know. I had to do this like crazy like test. You had to wear your purple. There pants. was like a five meter dash, and I had to wear it in purple pants, and I had to like I don't know drink a whole entire bottle of Jameson whiskey, and <laughs> I, it was a bunch of insane shit. But it here was I a am. Very, very negative casting couch experience. <laughs> It was horrifying. <laughs> was you can read about it in my memoirs. Uh, what about your blog? Can you write it now? I don't have a blog, but I'm working on my memoirs. What else is going on in the chat room? I don't know. I'm not in it. Well, I mean, just just stay posted. Now, there's one more thing we're going to show you about. Just Curse in it, but I'm out of it. Of Valberga. Curse of Valberga. I want metalhead fans, metalhead fans and horror fans to keep this on your radar because it is made, produced, and stars... Um, Nicholas Kvarforth from the Swedish. So, if you do all four fingers, does that look less threatening than shaking your finger at people? Yeah, it does. You're it's like, oh, friendly. look, I'm I'm uh -huh. proclaiming something, not mm. scolding you. Yep. Uh, now, ben Harris exactly has my feelings. That's a hell of a saw there. See? Yeah. It's a hell of a saw. We're on the same page. Now. Hope to see you at Frightmare. Yeah, Ben. Ben and Cordella. Uh, the, so... The Curse of Valborga is an independent film, mm -hmm. and they've made like a little fundraiser appeal um, video, and I want to show that now because this is a badass movie. We are focusing on the film, and we Like this, we have to, we need to see it. Do you think I come to this fucking shit country just for fun? Huh? 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 Sim, 
policija je, če je uvijek Quentin Tarantino je pa meni všeč nek, je na ful veliko krvi, ne. Ta film je eden z prvih, ki ima res veliko krvi. No, to tako in naprima za krvi. Ali ga pa takole, lej, takole ga naprima. Špric, špric, čau, evo ga. Tega tudi ni, da se lahko tudi take stvari spreducirajo, ki jih pač državni program filma pač noče, ne more. Gledajte ta film, ker ga je režiral režiser, ki je z idilo dokazal, da ta film morate videti. Podprite ga pa iz istega razloga. So check out more information at curseofvalberga.com. That was a little um, uh, fundraiser appeal. They're doing crowdfunding. And uh, so I, I don't know. I'm very excited about it because of Nicholas. Mm -hmm. I know you talk about it all the time. Thank you. Gas Monkey has another event coming up at Gas Monkey Live, Gas Monkey Bar and Grill. And that is freaking Deicide with our friends from Estellanix uh, opening for them. Jungle Rot, The Absence, Origin, Perpetrator, opening for Deicide, Death in Dallas Festival. That is uh, in May, so Sunday, May 12th. God, there's a lot, a lot coming up in May. Good shows in May. Mm -hmm. And a reminder, May 6th is The 69 Eyes, USA Tour 2019. They have not been in America in about 10 years. Our good friends from Scary Cherry and the Bang Bangs are kicking off that night, so please arrive early. I think doors, yeah, door seven, so show at eight. I think they may hit the stage maybe a few minutes before eight. Just mm -hmm. a heads up on that. If you want to see the 69 Eyes at minimal cost, you can go to corpsepaint.net and find our sponsorship tab. Scroll down to the bottom and hit donate. Make a donation of any size. And then uh, go to contact and shoot an email to me and let me know. The name to put it under. We will also uh, not only give you a pair of tickets, but give you this cool CD donated by Kill Everything, the awesome death metal band, Brian Wynn. Thank you very much for uh, for handing us some uh, some merch to use. Thank you very much, Brian. Jenny Slash, Ghost Babes, you had a great day yesterday. We were out and about all day yesterday. We didn't get home until 2.30 in the morning. But you were filming in haunted locations. We went to Aurora, Texas to find Ned, the alien grave. The alien that crashed there. It's not and, really and haunted, but it's weird and quirky. So we're but you went out. to the grave. Yeah. You, we, yeah. You saw the big rock. People keep, I didn't post any pictures of it. They're like, did you find it? I'm like, I'm not telling you what it like, you have to watch the video. Watch the show. We found it. Oh, gotcha. Okay. We're going to show it to you. you got to watch the video. <laughs> and then we went to the Baker Hotel and walked around the outside of it. You can't really get inside of it. It's really expensive. So if you want to give us some money, get in the Baker Hotel. I'm what, just kidding. What, what do they do? Uh, what, what, if someone wants to donate a few bucks, what, what, no, what do they do? No, you can, you can, um, I, I don't have any way right now. Okay. So yeah. anyway, we're working on a Patreon. We'll have that up. So if you'd like to support us, that's the way to support us is through our Patreon, and we'll have that up soon. Gotcha. Okay. But um, you can actually still go to investigate in the Baker, I found out. I think it, they said it costs like $1,000, and you have to have like an insane amount of insurance. Insurance coverage. Um, but we went to this amazing place called the Haunted Hill House. They had this really cool event benefiting a women's shelter mm -hmm. or women's charity, and uh, it was cool. And now, Haunted we were there Hill all night. Haunted Hill House is supposedly a haunted house. It's a very haunted house. In what city? In Mineral Wells. Uh, Texas. Yes. All right. And uh, so th th no one lives in this house? Uh, the lady said they tried sleeping in it a couple of nights, but so much bad shit happened. She said she got the, the ghost spirits kept choking her and trying to, you know, they're very violent sometimes in there, but not always. There's some, there's a lot of children in there apparently. So when the, but uh, she sleeps in a trailer now outside of the house. Oh yeah. When, when the footage is ready that you filmed yesterday and when you've got it edited ready, uh, then you'll be popping this out as ghost babes. It'll be in September. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be a while. We're working on it. We got to go back and get more footage. We uh, we want to actually rent the house out and go out and do we're, more footage there. We have to be we sure to send. We got some really good stuff. Be sure to send it to Ruby Modine because uh, she I will. expressed I will send in. it to her. Yes, yeah. definitely. Uh, but yeah, we have. We're going to Marshall at a really cool haunted BNB in a couple of weeks to film some of this. East Texas. Have some really yeah. Mm -hmm. We have some really cool places lined up for future episodes. So so far we have visited Jefferson. 
and we have visited um, Aurora. Aurora, and we visited Mineral the Haunted Hill House. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Is this you or me? <laughs> it's you. It's all you. This is how my life is every day. Mm -hmm. Every day. Mm -hmm. People are like, why are you so cranky all the time? This is why. <laughs> I was actually trying to think of the place we went to in the middle. There was a place in between called Goatman's Bridge, but you kept trying to tell me, feed me the answers. We went to Goatman's Bridge, mm -hmm. and, and that's so far, that's what we've hit. But we have some really exciting places. But these You're are all these are all uh, places with supposed uh, energy, electricity, uh, activity, and haunted spirits, perhaps. Yes. Of course. <laughs> Why are you keep doing this to me? Hey, oh we are the Corpse Paint Show. I'm not co-hosting we... it with him. I have Amazing Ghost Babe that doesn't do this to me. Oh. oh. What is her name? Matilda Crow. Oh yeah. AKA Velvet Mystique. Hey, Velvet. Velvet is the other one half of Ghost Babes. I will say they did give me holy water, and there was <laughs> a priest there, which makes you feel even a little more comfortable. He was like, "Here, take this," and I was like, "Thanks." It came. It looks like a hotel shampoo bottle. So in case anything bad happened, you like spray. I don't know what you do with it. What do you do with it? Do you throw the bottle? I thought it was used for exorcism. Open it. I don't know. Throw it. I don't know. Paying it. It's. It's. You know, I think it's a good conversation starter at parties. Like, hey, here, have this holy water. Don't drink it. Though. Or you could, I'm not going to drink it. You could no, switch you it out this. and put, like, vodka in it. Drink you know, one. you open the holy water bottle because it says holy water and has a cross on it. And you, like, pour vodka <laughs> into your drink. And you're like, what? It's holy water? I'm not that terrible of a person. <laughs> Did you know that you could see all of our episodes, and we got two and a half years worth excellent content, on our wonderful channel, which is on YouTube, the YouTube Corpse Paint Show channel. We archive everything there. Now, we want you to watch live. We want you to share this next week with your friends. And we'll do another, be doing another live show. But if you miss one, you can always go to the YouTube channel and see the archived um, episodes. Thank you again to Ruby Modine for spending some time with us. We appreciate you. Thank yes, you again to Sin you. Kieran from Ministry. Fucking Ministry. We appreciate you very much and hope to see you soon. We can't wait to see everyone at Texas Frightmare Weekend this weekend coming up, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And again, also at the uh, Gas Monkey Live, Mask Monkey Bar and Grill Show for 69 Eyes and Scary Cherry. Darn right. That's on Monday the 6th. Yeah, so uh, save up all your pennies because this weekend's going to cost you. It's expensive. <laughs> And so, yeah, we'll another reason, about it another on reason to make a uh, you know small dollar donation and earn some tickets to a great show. Have the, a, oh, the Corpse Paint Show says we hope you get what you deserve. Thank you, Ziggy. Have a good week. Sunday, we're here live. We're going to give you 90 minutes of live, great, irreverent shit. <laughs> and also just talk about Satan and talk about movies and talk about metal and talk about Jenny Slash's uh, weekly dose of horror. Yeah. Texas Fright My Weekend. I am here with D. Wallace. Don't just don't stare at my boobs all the time. Sure. I do get comments from occasionally religious fanatics. I've seen people you know, stop and down. want to wag their finger at me for a ring tank. The Gold Space Show rules!